Praise the Lord. We are grateful to our precious God who has brought us again this morning into his presence to be blessed and blessings we receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's have a word of prayer. Our righteous Father and God, we thank you for your goodness and mercy upon our lives. We bless and glorify your name for who you are, for such a loving Father who brought us again this morning at his feet to be blessed. We thank you for all the great things you have done in our life and the one you are about to do again. Here we are humbly at your feet. We bow ourselves, humble ourselves before you, ready to learn from you. I pray that you bestow upon us the unlimited knowledge that you have in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see the depths of your knowledge and help us to be obedient to it. We give you praise and adoration. We, take, uh, we pray that the Spirit of God will take full control of this assembly, that your word will go out unhindered. Any spirit of critics, any spirit of uh, challenge, any one that would dare to challenge your authority will be put to shame in Jesus' name. Every spirit contrary to your will is silenced right now. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, we are grateful to the Lord. Um, Today's Sunday, so here we are. Uh, we will start our search the scripture. And our topic of today is obedience to the new commandment. And our lesson is number 929. Obedience to the new commandments. And our memory verse is 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Anyone to recite it? Very easy one. So we go by this. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. Praise the Lord. Sister, Sister Joanna, you can go ahead. Hallelujah. Praise John. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we all read it together at the count of two? One, two, go. And hereby we do know mm -hmm, if we keep his commandments. So we're going to take the verse, the, the, the text in the same chapter, 1 John chapter 2. We are going to take just the half of, pretty much the half of that chapter. Um, from verse 1 to 14. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know, know we that we are in him. Verse 6, he that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also to also so to work, even as he worked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye have, you, had, you had from the beginning. The old, the old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, is past and the truth light, and the true light now shineth. Nine, he that said he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in, dark, in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth. 
because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. And so we will in Jesus' name. Again, the the, the title of today is Obedience to the New Commandment. Here we can see that uh, our dear Apostle, Apostle John, is focusing on eternal life, what it takes to have eternal life. You have to abide in the New Commandment, which is the supreme to all the Tenth Commandment in the law. <clears throat> and he is talking about that salvation that so many so-called believers have been, you know, are using in a wrong uh, way these days. So the apostle explained that salvation is sustained by displaying working in the light and showing fruits of righteousness. If you say that you believe or you are saved, you have to work in the light of God. You are not in darkness anymore, so your deeds will demonstrate in truth that you are in the light of God. So let's read Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to take verse 8 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 5, the verse 8 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Then he's saying, walk as children of light. So if we say we, talk, we confess salvation, we have to walk these days in the light. Because what, we were saved from what? We were saved from danger. Our situation were, were very compromising. Now that we withdrew ourselves, the Lord withdrew us from there. We didn't withdraw ourselves. The Lord took us from there. Okay, we were in the jail. We broke out of the prison. We should now walk in the light, no more in darkness. Verse 11 says, and we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. There are some activities, there are some behaviors that were not fruitful as a believers. So that's why we left that camp. Now in our new, new camp, we shouldn't applaud those who are still living in those kind of behaviors, but we should reprove them. We are not judging them, but we are telling them, see, I was there before, it's not good according to the will of God. That's what I, I left. So that kind of behavior is not according to the will of God. The Lord did not lower his standard today, uh, as so many people believe. Some people, they are talking about, okay, once you are saved, you can leave anyhow, and then you are still saved. No, the Lord did not lower his standard, all right? Uh, because... Once you say you are saved, you have to prove it uh, with your deeds and your works. Now, what is then the place of that genuine salvation experience in our work with the Lord? First, once we claim that we are saved, then God wants every one of us to be truly saved and possess that eternal life. It's very important. And professing to know the Lord is subjective. We mean that everybody can say, I'm the child of God. First of all, today, U.S. citizen is not only, you can look at somebody and say, okay, you are a citizen. You are not. No. No. Even by accent, you cannot say. All right? So everybody can claim I'm a U.S. citizen. Now, to prove it as another thing. Bring us the paper to justify it. Somebody may not really speak well English, but that person may be US citizen. And somebody may be even, you know, as a foreigner, speak better than even the, you know, those who are born here. But that person may not be a US citizen. So if you claim that you are saved, professing to know the Lord is subjective. Everyone can claim it. 
Every person can say, I am saved. But the grace and power to obey his, his word is indispensable evidence of salvation. Now, do you have that power? Do you have the grace to prove along your, li your lifetime that truly you are saved? That's what is evidence. So the Lord wants us, all of us, to question our salvation. Are we truly saved? Are we bringing forth true proof, okay, of repentance? And the Bible says, like we read before, it says Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, say what? And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So that's our passport. That's our citizen card. Or green, no, not green card. Our naturalization to heaven. Our citizenship proof that we are not participating anymore in the works of darkness. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So first point. Christ, our advocate and propitiation for sins. Verse 1 and 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Verse 2 say, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You see? So, uh, Apostle Paul, I'm sorry, Apostle uh, John, John is explaining that, uh, uh, you know, he kind of segmented, he kind of divided the church of the body of Christ into three categories, which is easily to understand. We have the babies, the newborn, we have the youth, the young one, vibrant, and we have the elderly one. So he's, he's a little children who are babes, a new citizen to the kingdom of God. We can categorize them. So here, that category is not subjective to your appearance or your physical, you know, or, you know, the way you look physically, no. You can be elderly person, but if you just get born again, you are a little baby in Christ. And so little children who are newborn, new babes in the kingdom of God, young men, you know, uh, are those who are growing believers who are more knowledgeable in the word of God and have faced and won battles of life. Praise the Lord. It means that you, you were young, you were a baby, you are growing, you are facing challenges, you are learning the word of God. As the, the challenges come, you face the challenges, you win them with the word of God. It is written as our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, use it. The devil tried to trick him many times. He used the same word of God that we are learning and to face the challenge, to face the devil and win the battle. So young men also are knowledgeable of the word of God and they are using it appropriately to win every battle by the grace of God. And now the fathers who are adult believers with a wealth of experiences. Praise the Lord. Huh. Adult, like I said, this one is not like uh, adults. Adult may be a baby in Christ, but those who are more experienced, so many years, all right? So it's not teaching them about the rudiment of faith anymore, but they are increasing in knowledge. They have so many experience to now advise or bring up the babes and also the young one in Christ. And Apostle Paul is saying, if, all right? If, uh, verse, uh, verse one, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye Sin not. That's very important. We should not sin at all. Hmm. But he's continuing by saying, and if any man sin, then there's a remedy. There's a solution for that. So Apostle Paul is writing that he's using if to new converts not to fall and rise into sin. The young man and father must not complete, contemplate sin at all. He say if so the young one who are more experienced and the fathers more experienced should not contemplate. It's just for the babies. As a baby, for example, you are young, vibrant. You have your, all your energy. You can't fall anyhow easily, no. But a, a toddler, a child, 
you know, just line, line, learning to, to step, you know, do some movement. One, two steps, that child can fall. Sometimes you can go and hold that child, you know, even try to help him or her how to work. So it's little tolerated for the babes in Christ to fall in sin. So that's what we're supposed to say, if. It's not even when. It's not like a, a, something we have to know. But it's for the babies. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. So if any young child in Christ fall, he has to know that there is an advocate, our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But the key is that do not sin anymore. Any, no sin at all. And, and he's talking about, uh, you know, Jesus Christ as a, an advocate. What is then an advocate? Who can give me the definition? Or uh, how do you understand the word advocate? Especially when we say Jesus Christ is our advocate. Our oh, daddy here, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. So, um, who can tell me? Who can have an advocate? Who should hire an advocate? An advocate played on behalf of someone. Who can be that someone? What's the qualification for that? Somebody who has committed an offense. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Somebody that is guilty, no, not guilt anyway, Presum presumptively, or people say, okay, you know, in America, <laughs> in a developed uh, society, they may see you doing it, okay, but you are still suspect. Thank you for the word. <laughs> Until proven guilty, you are still a suspect. Uh -huh. Somewhere in other part of the world, that's not possible anyway. But here, because of democracy, that's it. So they will bring you to a, a tribunal, you know, before the judge, the, uh, the, the judge. Now, the advocate will plead and will explain why did you do it or that picture they saw is not you, stuff like that. But now, advocate is a competent, qualified, and recognized defender, hallelujah, who pleads, like our father said, this, the cause of another that person is a, a suspect before the tribunal court of the Lord. Our advocate Christ pleads the cause of the guilty sinner. Here one is said, the law, you know, you are guilty anyway. It's not suspect. You did it, you did it in the courts of God. When God brought you, brings you to his court, God has not, it's not suspicious, nothing. It's not, you are not a suspect. You did it, you are caught. Now he brought you to his court. His court. Now the advocate is Jesus Christ to plead on your behalf. See? God, Jesus, why do we need Jesus Christ? We don't can we defend ourselves? No. Because Jesus Christ is the only qualified, competent one. You know, he understands. First of all, he's the one who pay for our price. That's why he, he is qualified. The next one. As advocate, advocate should understand the system of the country, to understand the laws and the regulations of the country, to know the technical language of the law, to use it. You know, when the judge, when you, the police knock at your door, by the grace of God, none of us will have that in Jesus' name. And they say, oh, sir or oh, ma'am, you are to follow us to the, you know, you are under arrest. And, and we are telling you now, I'm paraphrasing, that you should keep your mouth shut. You know, they use uh, this term, uh, you, sh you should remain, you have the right to remain silent and because anything you say can be used against you. Praise the Lord. Huh. So your advocate will tell you, don't say anything. Don't show them nothing. Tell them I'm coming, I'm on my way. He's the one who knows the word to use? Because by defending yourself, you can easily compromise yourself. So the, Jesus Christ understands the court, the judicial, the judicial law, everything of heaven, and can use that terminology, you know, laws and regulation, 
to defend us before the law. And he knows also the promises. The Bible said that he appeared in the presence of God for us. He ever lived to intercede on our behalf. So new converts, whom the apostle referred to as little children, should know the provision and the privileges we have in Jesus Christ. So if a baby fall into sin, the purpose is to not be crying, crying, no, rise up. We have an advocate. Don't take the habit of falling into it. Because if you say, oh, my advocate is there. The advocate is a human being. He can be tired too, no matter how much you are paying. As a matter of if you are paying him so much, he has so much money. Does he really need to come? You know, he's a rich now, big guy. So he's not going to worry about you anymore. So that's why as a babe in Christ, it's not habitual sin anymore. So we are preserved in righteousness, but if any man sin, we have that advocate, okay? So if here is not for habitual sinful act, but it's, uh, it's when, it ha if it happen, like, you know, things can happen, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Christ is our ever present advocate is our savior the lord the master he is the propitiation he is called also the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. he is the bishop of the church the shepherd of our soul we can see can, he has so many titles. you know a, a preacher said that jesus christ is the man god was looking for to save the world he looked around we can't find nobody except himself. So let me say that again. Christ is God. God himself is Jesus Christ. It's a mystery. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the man God is looking for throughout the whole world to come and step in the gap, stand in the gap so that he can forgive the sins of the whole world. God looked throughout. He found nobody. Throughout the ages, he found nobody. But only himself to step in. That's Christ Jesus. What a savior we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it's not, it's not only advocate for us alone, but it's for the whole world. Christ died for the whole. Salvation is for the whole world. God loved so, so much, loved the world, and he sent his only begotten son. God didn't just love uh, uh, just a, a sector of, uh, you know, only one part. You know, and you want the rest, like people say, uh, predestination or one, you know, only ca one category. No, he loved the whole world. Jesus Christ is the propitiation to the whole world, and he will all men to be saved. However, God's provision of resurrection is not designed to encourage daily and habitual sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When such unpremeditated sleep occurs, you know, when anybody falls into sin, then God expects the fallen behavior, believer to quickly run to the cross immediately for restoration. Because while wow, we are still in the grace, a time of grace, the fountain at the cross of Calvary, at the Mount uh, Golgotha, the fountain is still open. The blood of Jesus is still gushing out. It's still available to cleanse us. The moment you fall per adventure into sin, do not linger. Do not drag your feet. Just go right now and clean yourself. Plead for forgiveness. Because when the trumpet sounds, the time of grace is done. Praise the Lord. But we shouldn't, you know, mock God. Oh, the fountain is there. Let me do it. And then I pray for forgiveness. You are mocking God. You may not have the time to repent. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now we're going to look at the experiential proof of salvation. Experiential proof of salvation. Verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. That's a proof. If you know you, say you, you, you know the law, you have to keep his commandment. Verse, uh, verse 4 says what? He that said, I know him. Verse 6. Verse 6. He that said, he abided in him. Now, let's jump to verse 9. Verse 9 say, he that said, he is in the light. That's those are the proof. 
we have to prove that we are saved in Christ Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. He referred to the proof of a genuine profession by keeping the law, by abiding in the light, by, you know, you know applying the word of God. His testimony to know that he... Uh, okay, we have to show the testimony to know that in him we live and abide and so we keep his commandment you know it's not only interested in a, in the promises of god oh god is good god is good you know i always uh, when i look around you know we love to sing and god is using so much people so many people to be inspired to write songs these days praise worship songs but sometimes, you know, you know, I pray that the law, you know, when you, when you look at those songs, everything is about praising God, praising God, praising God. Rarely are the writers who talk about condemning sin in their songs. That's why sometimes it's difficult to find songs that go with the message. Every song, oh, praise. And the mundane people love it. Oh, who doesn't like the love of God? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He doesn't, you know, we love it. But the songs that will tell us who we are before the Lord so we can repent, it's rare to find those kind of lyrics these days. Praise the Lord. So it's saying that it's not only contemplating of the promises of God, no, but we'll be interested in having the urge to do and keep his commandment all the way. Keeping this commandment means to continue in his word. Beware of false prophets. Beware of covetousness. Treat others as we will want to be treated. Hallelujah. We should continue obedience to God's commands all the time. And that is the proof that we are true children of God. You see? You see verse 4 says that if he that say that I know him and keepeth not his commandment, the Bible says he's a, a liar, and the truth is not in him. Let's read the first John chapter three, next chapter, verse fifteen. Verse fifteen said, Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and he knows that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So Hating your brother, keeping grudge, you know, is not good at all. The clear evidence of salvation and holiness experience is the gracious ability to live like Christ. He that said he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked in the past. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us as an example that ye should follow his step. Brethren, the experiential proof of salvation is keeping the commandment of the law in verse 4. Say that, you know, is to know him. Verse 6, say that uh, uh, is abide in him. And verse 9, say that uh, he is in the light. And the Lord will keep us there in Jesus' name. Last part before we pray. Essential precept and exclusive privilege for the saints in Christ. The precepts and the exclusive privilege that we have in Christ Jesus Christ Jesus. We are going to focus on verse 7 of our chapter. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. It's talking about the commandment of love. You know, God commandments to love he commands everybody or he order everybody to love for instance the commandment about love is copiously recorded in the old testament testament all right god commands in deuteronomy to love the lord thy god with all this one chapter 30 verse 6 because of time even in leviticus chapter 9 verse 13 he say what to love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul, you know, and in the Bible, you say, avenge not, nor bear grudge against the children of thy people, 
but you know anyone that you know they should love their neighbor as themselves so the love of god and the love of neighbor demonstrated at the cross this is the new commandment that we are talking about and uh, he said uh, and again a new commandment that's verse uh, 8 again a new commandment i write unto you which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shine it the true the shadow you know tell me between the light and the shadow which one appear clearer the light hallelujah then the old testament is the shadow of jesus christ now the light of the world came hallelujah and now he's shining he's explaining everything that is dark in the past towards jesus christ you know the old testament in the old testament the bible talk about love your neighbor as yourself now in the new testament jesus saying love others as i have loved you i need somebody to quickly read john chapter 13 verse 34 please john 13 34 because of time help me out please thank you mm -hmm. hallelujah you love one another as what as i have loved you praise the lord who can tell me how jesus loved us how did he love us how did he give his how did he give his he died praise the lord hallelujah who is willing to die <laughs> sometimes you don't want to die for yourself <laughs> praise the lord uh-huh but jesus christ our savior you know he he considered even not himself he didn't consider himself he loved us even more than he loved himself let me explain see in the old testament love thy neighbor as yourself okay but jesus christ is telling us now in the new testament the same thing but in another uh, level see love each other as i have loved you not as yourself anymore okay because how did he love us the question is this can you kill yourself i'm sorry to use the word that kind of tough language is in the bible anyway can somebody kill himself i don't think so or can you allow somebody that you love to be killed no but christ allowed himself to be killed so that we can survive so it means that christ did not even love himself christ didn't love himself he said because of you i want to kill myself so that you can survive so love each other as i have loved you that's very deep the lord will help us to do as well in jesus name praise the lord first Corinthians chapter 3 verse first chapter 13 verse 3 let's read uh, that first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 3 to 8 we are talking about the true love of christ now and the true love of god he said and though I bestow all my good and feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned and have not love, the, the deep love, it profited me nothing. Deep love of God suffered long and is kind. The love of God envied not. The love of God vaunted itself not, not puffed up, does not have itself unseemly does not behave himself unseemly seeketh not of her own it's not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity in sin but rejoiceth in the truth beareth all things believeth all things hoped all things endureth all things the love of god the true one the deep one never faileth but whether there be prophecies all that will vanish one day but the word of God is telling us something that we should uh, love not just ourselves, love our neighbors, not as we are loving ourselves, but as we want. Christ loves us to the point that he died for us. This means what? Are you willing to go extra mile so that other people can come?
to the knowledge of God. Somebody did for you. Somebody was following after you. You know, uh, following like, uh, you know, uh, as a new convert, the person was following up, following up, praying for you, praying for you. You know, the person may be going sleeping or may be going to, to watch some games, but the person used that time to follow you, follow you or pray for you till today. By the grace of God, you are strong in the Lord. Are you willing to sacrifice the same thing for somebody else? Let's pray. A new commandment. This one is deep. It's not just the shallow one. I love God. I love God. You have to prove it. Your love for God needs to be prove, proven in, in, in your, you keeping the, 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 the word of God. In you abiding in the light. In, in you showing that truly you can go extra mile so that the body of Christ can be redeemed can be preserved for his coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for the way you have helped us to understand your word. I pray that the Spirit of God will come and illuminate more, more on this world so that we can live according to your will. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray.